Guys, it's Lost in Plot, and today we've got the Yellowstone Season 4 finale. Grass on the streets, weeds on the rooftops. Supersized finale. This is like an hour and a half long. It was. It was a much longer episode. So did that pay off? I think it did for me. I think it worked for me, but there's a, there's a lot to discuss on this, because mm -hmm. not only our reaction to it, which is one thing, but I think from what I've read online, the general audience reaction to it. And then, of course, there's the ratings numbers, which let's start with those because they were through, gotta be through the roof. Yeah, through the roof. Yeah, this, Even higher than the premiere. They're up around like 9 million, well, somewhere this, up there. This it's season is phenomenal. Yeah. This season has gone gangbusters from the inception. It's been bang, 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 bang in terms of the audience attention. But what about the audience reaction? Where are people coming down? They are coming down pretty lukewarm on this. Really? Yeah, not satisfied. They think... I remember reading that they don't think the finale did enough to move the narrative along. That things are kind of still status quo, if you will, which I understand. And it's kind of a problem when you do these episodic serial shows like this. is because you know when you do something big and you kill off one of those main characters, maybe your show gets a little bit worse ever since you killed off that character. It's not any good anymore. So it's kind of a, a subtle balance that... How can you keep the story moving and have irrevocable things happen that change things, but not lose all of the interest of your audience? And that's a mm -hmm. tough thing to balance. Yeah. For me, this entire season was basically, and maybe this is where the critique comes down. It, it felt like just a high tide. Every episode hitting a high bar, but not some of that build and, and peak crescendo and not a whole lot of narrative thrust over the span of the entire season. I don't think plot threads for a lot of the characters really developed over the course of it. I think instead what you're treated to is episodes that feel like a full meal rather than part of something bigger. And maybe that's where people want they that grand finale or that narrative thrust to kind of take them through and then some world-changing event transformations. Which, if that's your criticism, I think it's well-founded after you watch the finale. Yeah, one of the other comments that was common online was this season kind of focused on a lot of the sub-characters that people don't care about. Maybe, maybe you think Lloyd, maybe you think Jimmy. Now, if you look at their story arcs, those progressed over the season in yes. a natural arc. The way that the others just, just didn't. There was more of the high tide, like you said. Mm -hmm. But for those supplemental characters, there definitely was a common theme all the way through that ended in a nice kind of climax and crescendo. So and it's I, there, but it's there with people or characters that people are not caring about. And I'll be honest with you. If there, if there are characters that people don't care about, fine, to each their own. I certainly cared about them. And I was very much invested in their drama and the ups and downs that they went through over the course of the season. I agree. I thought Jimmy's arc all the way through, while he's not one of the pivotal characters of, of the Dutton family, was very satisfying. It was satisfying to see him go Extremely through all sad. that and get, get to the end of it and, and become a cowboy heading down to Texas with a new fiance. I think we can get yeah. into spoilers with this. We're talking about the season yeah. finale. And honestly, that arc could have made quite, I thought it could have made a great movie on its own right. Just to see the transformation of where he came from when we first met him in that trailer and he's just kind of washed out addict and then he becomes full cowboy and it's very earned yeah it's very earned. and not only that it also ties into everything we've been seeing going on with lloyd this season right because lloyd's have his had his struggle with walker and what's really at the core of it was i kind of equated it to him getting older and, and worried about that but it's really that he's he's just flat out lonely He's just a lonely damn guy, and now it's so painful for him to see Jimmy getting married and going off and starting his life and having someone where he's got nobody. It's so painful he can't even tell him goodbye just to walk away. It's true, and it's not just that he sees somebody else getting it, but he had a very deep and personal connection with Jimmy. Jimmy's yeah. not just some guy who has the things that he didn't get in life. He saw a lot of himself in Jimmy. He was very proud of Jimmy. He had a very paternal type of relationship with him. Um, and I thought it was it was moving and, and there was genuine emotion when the two had to part. And quite frankly, I thought that was one of the high marks, very touching moment that Taylor Sheridan excels at, is really understanding the emotions and the, and the psychology of his characters. I thought that was a very genuine moment. Fair enough. And now let's move over to the, let's get the wolf quest out of the way. This really is the quick. only, like, if, if somebody's going to rag against this, Casey's this season vision. and this finale, the vision quest with the wolf, and he's out there in the bearskin rug or whatever, 
just in this little four by four section that's been roped off hallucinating which is where he's been for episodes now and where he stays and you get the final revelation the vision comes he sums it, it he sums it up in one sentence although we don't know what he saw and uh what not satisfying. Like the end of us? The end of us. I saw the end of us. So not something satisfying. really, really bad coming down probably for season five. Which, okay, but I'm going to hallucinate for three episodes and then at the end of the season finale, I'm just going to come out and tell you something bad is coming. There oh, we're we kind of taking one off there with Casey. There Sorry, Casey. Go. There's other things you could have been doing instead of laying in the grass um, and hallucinating as you inhale. So then when we get back Drugs. to the rest of the Dutton family, we get more of the meaty ones. We get um, the surprise wedding between Rip and Beth. This is really Beth's season, I think, because Beth's relationship with her father is somewhat tested, although they did kind of pull that back quickly. I don't think... They really it, did. Yeah. She, well, she, she apologized. Yeah, I mean, because they make a lot of this eco-protester. She obviously has an impact on John Dutton, and that puts friction on his relationship with Beth. That's really what they explore. And at the same time, Beth is committing herself to a relationship um, with Rip, and I believe these are two fan-favorite characters. And it's, oh, yeah. really, it's really her season. Plus, she's got the boy um that she's taking in and she's nurturing at the same time it's it's you have a whole lot of beth doing a whole lot of things and this is an episode where beth takes very pivotal action with what i perceive to be the main brewing conflict that involved jamie was it satisfying there between jamie and his father for you no and i think everybody is going to kind of latch on to this i think we were all expecting bigger things in a more antagonistic relationship or something more pivotal to come from this and instead it was kind of just very much cut short without much fanfare. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we were expecting more fireworks than what we got, but in instead it's kind of this psychological torture that continues between Beth and Jamie getting him to do something that, you know, he's got no way out. And it makes perfect sense for, for Jamie because that's, that's, yeah, that's what he, he is. is. That's his character. That's what but, he'll but do. But as you point out, it continues, which is right. And now we've had four seasons of this where we have the exact same thing going over and over and over and over and over and over again. And we found a little bit of the back history between the two characters that justifies some of what's going on. But I wonder when we're going to push this interaction between the two to the next phase. Because I think we're just repeating the same beats. And that's the balancing act. Because presumably when you do that, you change it's, things. It's time to end your show because you're resolving the conflicts and that's how do you end something that's not meant to be ended or you know delay it as long as you can well I then think there that's you go where the audience then let's talk about that comes in. Have, is this a season where all we did was basically take what we had and just stretch it a little bit more to get more mileage out of it and we kind of just vamped it until we really want to get to those that's definitely family that's, plot beats? i think that's definitely what most of the audience feels like mm. they may feel a little bit frustrated that way but certainly the ratings <laughs> The, the ratings are not going to fall to you when you're getting 9.3 million for the finale. I mean, that's that's huge. That's enormous. I mean, maybe certain characters have been pushed back to the brink and we'll see this, this fallout happen. But, I mean, we're getting close to when you really have to end this. That's right. right. We are. And so I'll sum it up. I know audiences might be lukewarm on it. I wasn't. I very much enjoyed season four as much as all the other seasons. I thought it was excellent. Every single episode that I tuned in, I got something great and very much enjoyed investing my time. I never felt bad for doing so. Amazing characters, great writing, um, some real understanding of the character's psychology and evocative emotions. This finale episode for me is definitely coming in at a 7 out of 10, and it is a lie. Now, I gave this final episode an 8 out of 10. I really oh. enjoyed it as well. I thought it did really nice things with those subtle character arcs that I brought, that I mentioned between Jimmy and Lloyd and kind of giving that. That was the common thread through the season. It really was. And it actually mm -hmm. did tie back with what happens with Jamie and his father to what they were looking for in the very first episode is like who carried out this attack on them right? and making them pay. That spread all the way to the season and bait. You got the resolution. They shut the door on it. It's over. They, they closed they it shut up the door. In, in, in the last episode. It may not be as satisfying as, you know, maybe maybe audiences are used to or wanted when you start thinking about the expectations maybe they have after watching a Game of Thrones. Well, you, you know, get your, something different and uncommon. Your big characters here. are going to get knocked yeah. off. Well, Taylor on every Sheridan's episode. sensibilities are not there. He doesn't want the big the big gunfight shootout, good guys, bad guys, and this epic climactic battle. That doesn't in seem to interest him half as much as delving into the psychology of his characters and testing them and showing how their relationships evolve through the struggles that they all go through. 
So here's where we're at, and here's what I predict is going to happen. When you see the premiere for Season 5, you're not going to see those high numbers that you saw for the Season 4 premiere. I think they're going to be down a little bit. Because the, the troubling thing is, is either you wrap up the story, and your ratings are going to be through the roof to kind of pay off all these relationships. But if you're going to try and stretch, then your story is going to go down, your rating is going to go down, and it naturally ends itself anyway. So there's really not much you can do. You can flame out, you know, throw a log on the dam, but that, that water is eventually going to burst through and you're going to have to end your story sooner than later. Maybe the next season will do exactly that. Maybe. But before we wrap up season four as a whole, where do you what do you score that at? Season 4 as a whole is an 8 out of 10. I enjoyed it as much as all the other seasons of Yellowstone. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Same number, 8 out of 10. Same as the finale. It was just good quality all the way through. Exceptional quality, especially compared to all the other shows that are out there. There's no comparison. No. And that's really what it boils down to. Disappointed or not, go watch that other shit. I mean, give me a break. You'll be running back to this. It's true. And I understand the frustration out there with a lot of the viewing audience, but maybe, maybe next season is your last one. There you go. That's the word on Yellowstone Season 4. If you have differing opinions, please leave them in the comments section down below. Like and subscribe. Check us out on Twitter, and we will see you all on the next one.